Um, you know, vacancy announcement for the new police chief was posted at the uh, end of December. Uh, Jay Farr left um, sometime in September. And I told many in the community my goal was to have a new police chief in place this spring. That's still my goal. Um, with me today is Leroy Thompson, who's going to speak in a minute um, about all the outreach sessions we did in December and January to gauge what Arlingtonians were looking for in a new police chief. Uh, before uh, Mr. Thompson speaks, though, I did want to talk a little bit about some of my thinking at this point in the process, and I'll have more to add on this. Um, and I apologize, you know, if you know me well enough, you know the voice I least like to hear is my own, but I'll be going on for a few minutes here, so I apologize. Um, in hiring a police chief for Arlington, you know, each and every member of our community should know that the person I hire would be someone who has a profound appreciation for how policing can affect people's lives. You know, here in Arlington, we have a police force that in literally thousands of interactions each month in small and large ways uh, touch our lives in the community. It happens. And our police officers often meet up with residents, visitors, and those who work here um, during the most stressful moments of their lives. Um, much like our firefighters, you know, most of our Arlington residents look to our police with an expectation of, here comes somebody who cares for me and is going to help me in a time of trouble. Um, and that's incredibly important. However, for some, when they see the p police, it fills them with some dread. You know, they've lived in communities um, other than Arlington where, where some of the police aren't focused necessarily on doing what I just said. Um, or they've grown up in countries where you know, police who are armed are really instruments of brutality. So, you know, I've talked to all the candidates for police chief to make sure that they are aware that I'm I, I'm looking for a chief who understands that, a chief who can understand that our community gains strength from the fact that we have people from all sorts of different backgrounds and diversity um, and different life experiences. Um, you know, Every person in our community has had a different kind of experiences. You know, our neighbors are from so many different places, and um, the way they've been treated is profoundly affected. We have to we have to be upfront about this. It's profoundly affected by the color of their skin and the 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 accent of their voice and their mental and physical condition. And uh, we must be empathetic and uh, make sure that those differences that we hear and experience are things that make us strong. Um, so, our, um, in addition to that, and I think some people would say, well, it goes without saying, our next police chief needs to be held to the highest standards of integrity. Um, someone who uh, is an ability that has an ability to, to think about what's going on and take their actions with grace and understanding. You know, we have to realize and hope that a police officer that stops a person to talk is uh, has open eyes and open ears and, and an open heart to listen to what's going on. Um, you know, I believe our police are a shining example of what makes Arlington wonderful. Um, over the past year, I've talked with, oh, our outside consultants, members of our community, uh, police, family members, friends, members of the department, neighbors, strangers. I sometimes talk to elected officials. Um, and I hear much the same that our police are respected. And I'm looking for a new police chief that will uphold that level of respect. But I need a chief that can uh, lead a force that will accept all that is new and good in the profession while discarding that which is sometimes tired. Um, I need a chief that has compassion for our community and also has compassion for our officers who are on the front line every day, working with our residents and businesses and visitors. You know, our police are not perfect. However, they do make sacrifices and are prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice to uphold their oath to pr protect our community. And this past year has been really difficult for our officers. I've talked with many of them, as I know have board members have, about, well, you know, the opinions of some of our officers may vary on the issues of the day. There's never been a harder time for them to do their job. Um, I want a police chief who knows this and will be their strongest advocate when they need it and a leader that can help them uh, with passion, compassion, and commitment. And I recognize, and I know we're probably in an hour gonna hear about the verdict out in Minneapolis, that there are a lot of national conversations taking on about our, going on about our police and the role they should play. And as we've spent a lot of time talking about already today, that 15 member police practices group, 
um, and the outside consultant we have. As I said, in answering Mr. Carantonis's question, the next police chief is going to embrace, not only embrace, but understand the underlying reasons that the police practices group reached their recommendations. You know, every year I get an opportunity to speak about a little bit about what my values are because I propose a budget. There's no more important document that our community has to speak to our values. Over the last five years, I've proposed budgets that um, have tried to increase the pay for our officers so that maybe it'd be easier for them to live in our community. Um, we've invested a lot in the best protective gear. Um, We've, bet, we've invested in a lot of the things that Ms. Garvey talked about, improving the way our police are trained and the practices they have in dealing with those in mental health crisis. Um, we've, uh, I brought forward proposals on funding for body-worn cameras, uh, the best kind of training we can have for our police, and also a lot of training in the area of diversity. So, you know, picking a chief isn't just, you know, we just don't want to pick someone just for the sake of, you know, picking something new and shiny or something old and worn. Uh, we want to make sure that our police chief will will stand up for working for what is right in our community. And finally, and this is not insignificant, I want a chief that can work with others. Um, no single person can succeed by himself or herself. Um, we need allies. It's, you know, our criminal justice system isn't just our police. It's our Commonwealth's attorney. It's our sheriff. It's our judges. Um, I need a chief who can work with all of those. And um, we need a community too that can work with our chief. I ask the community, however, whatever I decide for our police chief, that our community work with him or her and our police to make sure that our police perform the best they can and we praise them when they do well and we call them out in a polite and professional way or even more if it's necessary when they do something wrong. So I've lived in Arlington for 36 years. Obviously I moved here when I was two years old and uh, I've been, uh, I got married in this community. I raised my kids here and I want a chief that was uh, gonna embrace all that's good in our community and also, and make it better. So um, with that short prelude, I'm gonna turn it over to Leroy Thompson, who is gonna walk you through uh, the summary of all the outreach we did uh, to analyze what um, the people of Arlington are looking for in a police chief. It's my distinct pleasure to turn it over to you, Leroy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Appreciate it. Um, uh, there is also a uh, document to, to share with you as well. It has lots of detail. Um, so what I'll do also is to provide you with just a little bit of context. Um, so next uh, next slide, please. You can see there again the overall purpose uh, and the report does uh, summarize feedback and also summarize themes. Um, Part of the context, you know, is is exactly what you've just been talking about in terms of how does Arlington fit in terms of, you know, the national scope of this particular issue. Certainly, as was mentioned, the outcome of, of the trial that's going on and other events are going to shape how you use this context. Uh, the other element would be just understanding, you know, the real nuances of law enforcement culture in order to do the incredibly difficult and often dangerous job uh, that is done in any community. Uh, it's a very unique and a very uh, distinct culture, um, uh, as well as having lots of subcultures, many times affected by the rank and the nature of the work that people do. Uh, that's also balanced by the way the public responds to law enforcement, which is pretty complex. Across the nation, an officer on any given day is equally um, opt uh, apt to be thanked for their services or to be verbally abused for doing the job, in fact, even the right way. And so taking those things into context is pretty critical. And so I'll also give you some context around the outcomes of the uh, surveys as well as focus groups. Next slide, please. Uh, so in the context of the document, uh, you, you can see the various segments. I'll go through all of them, but again, uh, not reading the text to you and not necessarily covering the details, but again, giving you some context for them and a little bit of anecdotal data uh, that will help you interpret the information as you go through it on your own. Thank you. Next slide. So um, essentially, we basically were able to look at uh, some qualitative information, quantitative data, uh, identifying where the community is at. Essentially, between the online survey and the focus groups that were done, uh, there's a little bit of an overlap. So if you if you see in terms of the questions on the online survey, a lot of it, again, was an external view. 
uh, how the uh, police department is perceived, um, how much change is required in terms of the community's feel to bring the uh, to bring the police force to the to the place they'd like it to be, and also the overlap in terms of current issues that they think need to be dealt with, as well as the kinds of skills and capabilities that a new chief uh, should embody. On the focus group side, uh, we essentially ask the same set of questions uh, to both the, uh, the police department as well as to community members, dealing with the impact in terms of those opportunities, uh, the kinds of us, uh, what it would require in terms of, of a police chief to be successful, and also again, dovetailing in terms of the kinds of qualities. And you'll see, uh, again, some alignment in certain areas and some gaps in certain areas. And again, here's where the context is, is most critical. Uh, thank you, next slide, please. So this is just a summary of the uh, of the sources of information between focus groups and uh, community surveys. We also had the opportunity to do some additional survey information. So um, all told, uh, we had the opportunity to talk to about 620 people. Uh, those numbers are, are about 30 or so shy. Um, in any of these organizational surveys, uh, regardless of the nature of them, regardless of the organization, there are always going to be people, especially inside the organization, who aren't necessarily really comfortable sharing over Microsoft Teams or any sort of public setting. And especially with community surveys and focus groups, we always offer the opportunity to get in touch with us later on in case any other issues arise. Um, and in this instance, we had a couple things we're able to do. Um, out of the responses, uh, it was suggested that we reach out to the police union, that there would be a number of line officers, especially who, again, just may not feel comfortable. And so they were actually able to get an additional 100 responses uh, from the union survey. We also had 32 individual conversations. Uh, 25 of those were um, were by phone calls and the other five were by emails. Um, of the, the additional conversations, 24 were police department members uh, who just wanted to uh, to weigh in, add some information, and all told, there were 15 unique responses uh, from inside the department, in addition to the online survey and the focus groups as well. Um, all of the activities went extremely well. Uh, when you do this kind of work, you're sort of prepared for reluctance. Uh, you're prepared to, uh, you know, to have to uh, to really convince people to share, but no difficulty there. Uh, it was respectful, it was uplifting, it was very positive, very candid, uh, and again, as I hope you'll see, uh, very insightful. Uh, so next slide, please. And then we can actually go to the to the next slide after this. These are the overall feedback themes. So a little bit of context in terms of what actually stood out in terms of the uh, feedback themes. And this is the, the, the interactions with the police uh, department staff. Um, all, all 10 of those, again, uh, were, were pretty clear across the board. I would have to say that the left-hand column, diversity concerns, building on successes, and impact on morale were probably the things where you could sense the most energy about. Uh, the most number of people, again, weighing in in the focus groups and the most uh, consistency uh, in terms of uh, uh, of other information that we received in talking to people afterwards. And again, you can see some of the details uh, there. Uh, there's also, if you go to the far column, uh, the national narrative. Lots of concerns, as you would expect, uh, that at that particular time, and certainly as we now move forward, I think we're going to be back into the same uh, setting, uh, where the idea of, of having to overreact to this notion of a national narrative was on their minds. Again, um, Arlington has been really fortunate to not only have a very uh, successful community, but also a very successful police department. There is an interesting fact to that that you'll also see later uh, that is sort of one of the uh, unintended consequences uh, of, again, of having a community at this high level of interaction and a, high, uh, a very low level of incidences uh, that are deemed pretty serious as you compare Arlington to other parts of the country. Next slide, please. These are the overall feedback themes uh, that we get from the community. And so what stands out here uh, at the top of the list would be policing strategy. So um, especially in the focus groups, as you'll see, very well-prepared people, not so much with an agenda at all, but well-prepared in terms of their knowledge of policing and sort of the notion that across the country and something to be considered also in Arlington is uh, much of the policing strategy kind of goes back to the war on drugs concept. Um, and, and so there's sort of a dichotomy, if you will, in, in policing in general across whether I perceive myself as an officer um, as a protector or whether I perceive, my, perceive myself as an enforcer and again, combinations in between. 
And so policing strategy was really at, at, at the top of the list in terms of uh, the community's feedback. The other thing that really resonated a lot in terms of a lot of energy was data and the importance of disaggregating data and also the importance of capturing data that may not necessarily be captured now. And so disaggregation certainly is looking at the the notion uh, at the the details of incidences that have occurred, who was involved in what happened. There's also data that um, was suggested that could also be collected. So for example, uh, the number of arrests or the number of uh, other uh, interactions where it turns out that the conclusion was that there was really nothing here, nothing, nothing turned out. Uh, data of that nature to really support better insights in terms of evaluating the effectiveness of, 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 of the police and certainly a chief who would support that. And really what was very, very significant also is uh, the second, uh, in, the, in the first column, number two, relationship building. Uh, just the importance of the new chief being someone who is able to build those multifaceted relationships across the community. Uh, there was a pretty good um, uh, number of people from the differently able community in terms of supporting that. A lot of issues around mental health and just the special kinds of concerns. And it also it also goes back to cultural competence. And I only cite this uh, because this uh, deals with a very, very broad definition of culture. Uh, not just the obvious elements of culture in terms of ethnicity and gender and the like, but again, uh, very crucial cultural distinctions and understanding those nuances and getting a better appreciation of that. And so there was a, a very significant uh, issue around that. And then in general, uh, just the openness to change. That was the one variable uh, that you will see that was actually uh, pretty common across all of the discussions, whether it was with individuals inside the police department, community uh, surveys, or community focus groups. Next slide, please. And then you can actually go to the, the slide after that, uh, some insights in terms of the community survey. So these are just some, some overall statistics in terms of um, what the feedback was from the community survey. Uh, you'll see uh, at the bottom left, um, the understandable concern that a new police chief really have had some experience uh, that is Arlington-like, uh, that they really do appreciate um, you know, the, the, the difference in a community uh, with the demographics and, and the history of Arlington. Uh, at, in terms of the, uh, the, the, at the top, the light blue, um, this is, I, I, would, I would look at the context of this as this uh, really being a huge opportunity when uh, in terms of the survey population, you have about an equal number of people who think that it's gonna be relatively easy for a new police chief to understand how to serve Arlington and another third disagreeing. And there's a third in the middle and I think the concentration on basically um, identifying what the people in the middle feel and doing the kinds of things that have been identified, uh, I think creates a really great opportunity uh, for a new police chief in terms of bringing about the kinds of change that everybody uh, concurs that that should, um, you know, that should happen. Uh, at the top right, the 56%, again, this just echoes a lot of the previous discussion in terms of a general sense of the counting having a good reputation for effective policing. Um, again, a lot of the positive really depends on how much interaction you've actually had. And of course, those who've had less than positive interaction certainly have different feelings about that. But that's also, I think, a very important statistic, you know, that a new chief would take into account. Uh, going down to the middle of the 33%, um, the idea that a, a new police chief would not have to make a lot of changes to be successful. And so again, there is a, uh, a significant opportunity for change. And the issue is what kind of change is really necessary, which again goes back to the initial concern of many of the officers in terms of not necessarily following the national narrative, but being really concerned and very specific about what the particular issues are within Arlington County itself. And so that's just sort of an overall sense in terms of the impact of the community. Uh, next slide, please, and following. Uh, these are, are simply some further indications, uh, breakdowns rather, of the responses to the community survey. And there are six different slides that address those particular questions. Uh, you can see here uh, that in terms of that effective reputation, reputation, it's actually, I think, over 56%, because if you sort of exclude those who don't know, meaning they haven't had the context to have an opinion, the sense of a good reputation is more like over 60%, which again, I think that is an important inclusion as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and you can see here again, echoed uh, as I did in terms of context, uh, the, the large number of people who are really concerned uh, that the police chief have some experience 
um, with uh, urban communities, both either small or large, uh, in, in terms of them appreciating uh, the nature of those communities, as well as the diversity that comes along with it. Uh, next slide, please. And here again is the backdrop of a, uh, a new police chief not needing to make a lot of changes to be successful. Uh, and you can see again that bimodal distribution. Uh, it's fairly balanced on both ends between folks who disagree, we need a lot of change, and those who, who say we don't need a lot of change. And a lot of this, again, is the context and the nature of their interactions. There is an awful lot of, um, uh, of, of energy and a lot of positive feedback in the focus groups around some of the specialty programs. Uh, and some of the disagreements, again, were more surrounding the bigger picture. Again, what's the strategy? What's the philosophy of, of law enforcement? What kind of specialized training is gonna be required in Arlington uh, to address, again, those specific uh, community needs? Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, if you basically look at the highest scoring areas, they're essentially saying very, very similar things. Uh, it, whether it's uh, embracing a diverse community, the training that officers receive, how arrests are handled and community relations, it all goes back again to the notion of um, the idea of relationship building, uh, that the priority again would be for a new chief to have the kind of competence and the kind of insight uh, to make sure that all the dots are connected. So um, I, I would almost say it's comfortable to view uh, the, the highest force uh, the high, the four highest scoring scores um, as, uh, as as really connected. Uh, visibility of officers in the community, it would be the next highest scoring uh, item on the survey. A lot of the context of this, and there was a lot of discussion and a lot of energy on both sides, both within the police department, also in terms of the community, of you know how we factor in uh, the percentage of officers who do not reside in the county. Uh, and the issue on both sides is not that that is necessarily a, a huge difficulty, but in order to create more sensitivity on both sides, some strategies around, again, connecting officers to the community. At the same time, uh, you, again, you have a number of officers, especially those who've been around for a while, who have outstanding reputations with the community because they spent the time uh, being visible and, and being known by the community. There is always within, you know, a law enforcement, that particular issue in terms of community context. And again, how well uh, officers are connected to communities in which they serve. Next slide. Uh, this uh, are the uh, uh, breakdown in terms of scores around um, how best to serve the community. And again, you can see uh, the percentages in terms of agreeing and strongly agreeing, really depending uh, again on the context. Uh, pretty evenly split if you went back to page 13, which we don't need to do, but just for your own review. If you go back to page 13 of the report, you'll see that it's an even split um, as well with the notion of making change. So I think you could view those two elements also in, in context. Uh, those who would believe that significant change uh, would be necessary would be the ones who would disagree that uh, the next police chief would have an easy time. Uh, those who believe that a uh, minimal amount of change might be needed uh, would probably align with those who thought who would think that uh, the, the uh, new police chief would have a relatively easy time. So I think there's some some convergence between those uh, those pieces of data and especially again taking some of the anecdotal information that we got from talking to people offline as well. Next slide please. These are the list of, uh, uh, of leadership skills that were given for people to choose from. And again, just as we've been saying, if you look at the, the last, uh, the bottom three scores, or even the, 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 the last four scores, from embracing ethnic differences all the way to active listening, again, you're still seeing that incredible priority uh, in terms of concurrence um, by, by the, in the community of someone who is able to build relationships. Obviously, again, the relationships that different people are pointing to, you know, are, are, are not the same, but there is this notion of uh, developing relationships. There was also a lot of anecdotal data around this question in terms of building relationships with um, different policing models. And we, again, we, we've talked, we're talking a lot about that in the, in the public forum these days in terms of community policing. And again, other forms of integrative efforts between the police department, human services, uh, and other resources that kind of connect. And, th and this is really kind of a, a trend in general across the board in human services, uh, the notion of taking what would be termed a more ecological approach, you know, recognizing the areas that people who find themselves law enforcement engage, the places that they touch across a government spectrum, and having all the organizations that they touch 
uh, develop some common understanding of how to address their particular needs. And so, uh, again, another example in terms of, again, the significant um, inference in terms of relationship building. Uh, next slide. And again, you can go to the slide after that. Uh, so this is uh, feedback uh, in terms of the questions that were raised with the police and then qu the same question again in the focus groups that were raised with the community. Uh, so you'll see some gaps here. You'll also see some distinctions. And what you see there is a word cloud. And that essentially is part of what is offered here as a, as a, a sentiment analysis. So going through all the comments, uh, uh, there are uh, as a, sensitive, a sen sentiment analysis program that can kind of surface uh, the ideas and issues that are mentioned most often. And that's what you'll see on the following pages. And you can see in terms of that first question, the opportunities that you would see for a new chief to have an impact. Uh, and you can see there the aforementioned increasing morale, instilling change, supporting officers, and demonstrating leadership. Those were the four main sentiments that emerged from the uh, police department responses to that particular question, both um, uh, in the focus groups, as well as, uh, again, some of the anecdotal data. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the same um, uh, sentiment analysis that you see uh, from the community. And so there are there are a couple of gaps here. Um, one gap is, again, um, not seeing a, a real uh, connection in terms of relationship building on the department side. Um, but there also are some common issues in terms of the opportunity to instill change. Um, the big issue that is also not felt as clearly by the community is understanding how the current issues that are being faced, as Mr. Schwartz said, have really affected the morale of uh, many of the line officers and staff. Significant issues uh, that they're addressing now uh, just in terms of the way they feel they're being responded to based on what's going on across the country. And so there's a bit of an overlap here in terms of sentiment, but a big gap in terms of the importance uh, within the Department of Relationship Building and more of a sensitivity, again, by the community in terms of understanding uh, what the officers are going through and even to a certain extent, understanding exactly what kind of work that they do. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the, the second question uh, in terms of what advice would you give a new chief that would help them be successful? And this is the uh, internal uh, police department uh, sentiments, listening to officers, supporting officers, engaging more with officers, and also respecting officers. I, I would have to um, you know, uh, comment just in terms of the, the work that I've done in law enforcement. The, the culture of law enforcement, again, because of its uniqueness, um, it does by, by nature create some of the angst that you see. I would not attribute um, all of the, uh, the issues in terms of listening and supporting and engaging and respecting uh, to the way officers are being treated overall. There certainly are, as in any department in any uh, lo locale, uh, some internal issues around promotions, uh, some internal issues around bias. Again, this is common to the field. Uh, it's what you would expect in, in most settings. There, there is an incredible part of law enforcement culture that even under those circumstances, even the officers who, who are affected by it, uh, what is the priority is you know, sticking together and getting the work done simply because of the nature of the work that they do. Again, that does not in any way, shape or form negate or mitigate the real issues that need to be addressed within the department. But I, I just thought to, I'd give you a little bit of context uh, and that context, again, comes from having talked to several of those officers who just wanted to make it clear real issues and concerns around these kinds of uh, these kinds of difficulties. But at the end of the day, you know, there is a unanimity in getting the work done. So you have a really interesting dynamic there about two things which seem to be contradictory act actually being true at the same time. And again, uh, that's the context of appreciating this unique quality of law enforcement culture. Next slide, please. Community feedback on exactly uh, uh, the, the same question in terms of opera, uh, the advice that you might give to a, uh, to a new chief. And again, you'll see here that uh, building on successes, there's certainly, uh, as I mentioned, especially in terms of uh, specialty programs, a real understanding of some of the, the, the great things that the department should get credit for. Uh, the idea, again, of understanding uniqueness of the county, um, acting on feedback, this goes back to the importance that was surfaced in the focus groups on the importance of data 
disaggregation of data around law enforcement actions, as well as looking to capture data that might not be currently a part of it. And again, here is uh, number four, is, is where there, uh, once again, is a fair amount of continuity. Uh, the idea that there is the, the need and the opportunity to embrace embrace change. Um, a lot of the um, uh, of what also is common um, is having a, a chief who again has a real vision. Uh, officers um, want and need a chief who has a vision that really uplifts and embraces the work that they do. And the community uh, wants a police chief who has a vision, you know, for for recrafting the way law enforcement is done as is required within the county, and certainly continue to build on the on the good things uh, that the department has been noted for. Uh, so that's the second question, and some linkages between the two. Next slide, please. Final question: uh, the most important qualities of a new chief. Um, you know, these kinds of questions. Uh, the difficulty with them is simply that leadership, change, integrity, and honesty are fairly generic characteristics. You certainly would assume integrity, you would assume honesty, you would assume leadership. What's going to be important here is to take a very close look, um, at, again, at the descriptors underneath. They're much more valuable indicators uh, than just the broad sentiments. And these were ranked in terms of uh, frequency of mention, in terms of the general context. So again, um, what the, the guarantee for everyone participating was that we would not add your comments by attribution, uh, but that we would summarize the themes. And so these are not the actual comments that people made, but simply a revised version that captures the thought and I believe captures it pretty accurately. So in this instance, I certainly would encourage you to look at the fine print as it were under those four categories in terms of qualities. Next slide, please. I would hold the same thing to be true for community feedback um, for the most part. Again, all of those are fairly common things, competence, experience. Um, in terms of being empathetic and collaborative, again, this goes right back to some of the other themes that you saw. And so again, there's a pretty good congruence across the board relative to things that people are interested in. And again, um, especially with empathy and especially with collaborative, uh, again, the fine print there is the most important part of those sentiments because they do, I think, uh, a much better job are, of articulating precisely what was meant uh, in terms of those uh, of those comments. And that is, um, I think, the sum of it. Uh, the next slide is the uh, that leading into the appendices, uh, which basically capture the questions that were asked if you have an interest in that. And so I won't go through those because those are, uh, you know, we've actually covered those questions, but that is the material that's in the appendix. Uh, so with that, at about 30, 78 RPM, if you go back to those days and you know what that even means, <laughs> I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you might have about any aspect uh, of the engagement survey information. Thank you, Mr. Thompson and um, Mr. Schwartz for the introduction there and, and moving us forward. Um, I'll just start with a preliminary um, comment, and that is just that uh, I would hope, maybe it's for the manager, I'd like to ask that the presentation just presented also be posted uh, online. Um, and we'll do that on the police practices group, and we'll also make sure that it's available so uh, our community can find it. So that's just my preliminary thought. I'll send it to Mr. Dorsey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, really robust body of work, and uh, I'm, I'm just really thrilled to see that the multiple levels of engagement and going deeper and deeper into really eliciting some useful information, which I think this does, so thank you. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, I'm curious, back on slide, I think it was 12 or somewhere around slide 12, it were the various, uh, you highlighted some some interesting survey responses. Um, yeah, slide 12 were, were the community responses around the type of community that you would want to put a uh, police chief to have been working in prior to coming to Arlington. Right. So there was one that noted 33% uh, um, will not believe that the police chief will have a lot of work to do or something like that. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I believe that's slide 10. Mm -hmm. Slide 10. Sorry about that. So uh, it, does, does that was that a binary question or were there a range of responses and you just gave us the, the uh, sentiment that got a plurality? Yeah, it was a Likert scale. Okay, uh, went got from, it. You know, strongly agree to strongly disagree got and it. all okay. in between. So we basically just summarized the extremes of those right. viewpoints, yeah. So thank you very much. Just wanted to make sure 
Um, you know, the Likert scale is is good. This tells me that this is where the uh, greatest concentration of sentiment was, but I didn't want anybody looking in, wondering whether or not that means two thirds believes that they will there will need to be a lot of changes to be made. Yeah, and you should be able to look into the details uh, behind that question and the data that accompanies it. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Certainly, certainly. Uh, I believe Mr. Carantonis next. Uh, no. <clears throat> Uh, thank you so much for the for, for the presentation. It was indeed very very fast paced. Uh, I'm uh, I, I love vinyl. I know how fast 75 <laughs> <laughs> RPM is. So uh, I I wanted to ask you something very very simple. Don't you find that in several questions, community responses, that there is in a you know, for a community like ours that hasn't had the uh, traumatic incidents uh, here of, of uh, you know, very egregious cases of misconduct, of, of issues that have been contentious, etc. Don't you find it relatively, uh, relatively high, a, flag, a, 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 a fact worth a flag that almost half of our residents or responders actually don't think uh, think that things have to change that there is a strong signal that that things have to change i i perfectly understand why a, a lot of uh, residents would would um, you know wouldn't see a, a reason why things have to change or or would would actually you know be focused on more more of an evolutionary uh, change but I, I see a strong signal that People will say, yes, I believe that things have to change uh, quite a lot, actually. Different yes. scales, but quite, they are, they're on the on this side of the of the equation, so so to say. Yes, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because I, I can provide you with some insight into that. Uh, and that's uh, what I what I mentioned as sort of one of the unintended consequences of being in a comparatively safe, comparatively crime free community. Uh, there were lots of comments. Um, especially in the focus groups, that the lack of major concerns in terms of law enforcement, law enforcement actually, actually encourages more focus on the less significant issues. So you'll find that uh, many of the ethnic communities have major concerns over traffic stops. Um, they're, they're not major crime issues, and um, they, they, they become egregious because in so many instances, there's really nothing happening. And again, th this extends you know, even beyond ethnic communities, uh, there are some fairly, you know, um, well-reported instances of Arlington County employees who work at a relatively high level in the government who happen to come from ethnic groups who have endured the same kinds of issues. And so it's those concerns uh, that people are more concerned about in terms of change. We did two sessions uh, that were exclusively uh, built for the Spanish-speaking community, and there's a long, long, long list of what we would consider in the grand scheme of things, very small problems, but become egregious just based on the frequency and the sense that they're concentrated on those communities. And so um, that's where that concern lies, uh, that there are lots of issues that don't necessarily rise to the level uh, of concern about crime, but do have some, some problems in terms of widening this gap between the sensitivity of the law enforcement uh, professionals and the sensitivity of the community to each other. And that's where I think a lot of the concern is. OK, uh, thank you. I, I yield. Uh, that's that's worth for me to to discuss. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that sensitivity has a lot to do with uh, which communities are policed, uh, who receives policing more than others, right? Yes, uh, we, absolutely. We are not a homogeneous or, you know, Policing is not normally distributed uh, uh, across uh, uh, the territory, across the demographic, ac across basically nothing. So I, I do believe that we have to go uh, sector by sector and cohort by cohort and see where the, the issues are. Yeah, and that, and, um, and that goes back, if I, could, if I could add another connection, that goes back to the data and the disaggregation of data and the collection of data uh, and, and collecting data that isn't currently collected that would shed better insight into yeah. those, you know, into those differentials between communities and how well they're policed and how much policing and what type. 
Thank, thank you for, for highlighting that. It goes also back to Ms. Crystal's remarks for, before that. How do we measure success, you know, progress? How do we report? And at the end, how are we holding ourselves, make, make ourselves available to accountability, which is for me a very important thing. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carantonis and Mr. Thompson for the thoughtful uh, responses and, and context. I think Ms. Garvey next. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Thompson, it's so good to see you again. Likewise, it's, likewise. It's been a while. It's just yes, it great. Has. And thank you for this great work. Um, you know, I don't know, I'll find out. I don't know how the contract goes, but I may at some point want to just sit down with you and just talk about this rather than, you know, do it in a, in a sort of this very formal setting because there's, there's so much here and I would love to pick your brain. And to start on that, just one question, I think, um, is there anything in here that surprised you? What or, or what jumps out at you as the main kind of issue? I, I guess I, I, I wouldn't say anything surprised me, right? Okay. Um, because they, they are fairly common issues. The difference is degree. Um, I think the thing that really did stand out uh, was was what I, I hope I made uh, a more pronounced is the the value placed on relationship building and the value placed on data. Those yep. would be the two things I think that um, have the the most impact in terms of the community, number one, and certainly the most impact on actually, you know, making the kinds of changes in Arlington County law enforcement that meet the needs of the community. Because if it's not based on data, then we're likely to miss opportunities uh, as well as to overemphasize uh, problems. So those were the two things I would highlight. But I, I would say a fairly, you know, a normal reaction um, to these kinds of issues, especially in a community, you know, like Arlington. So nothing really surprising, though. No, no, that 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 in a way that's good to hear. And I, you know, and I was struck by um, there, there was one comment on how the, the new police chief needs to really understand the Arlington community. And I found myself thinking, I'm not sure I understand the Arlington <laughs> community after over 40 years living here. And that's where the data comes in, as you really showed, because that, you know, we all have our perceptions and our, our thoughts about what things are in our experiences, but the data really helps surface a lot. So that is absolutely crucial. Yeah. And then the the other thing, which I guess is really relationships as well, I was struck too by how both, I think both the police groups uh, that were questioned and the, um, the community, they all said, show that you care, show that you care. Um, and that really is what relationships are all about. Um, absolutely crucial. Um, I know, as you probably are aware, we had built up a, a system called, you know, community policing, which had our officers out in the community. And then because of budget cuts, that got kind of pulled back. And I always kind of haven't have thought we need to just do more of that. Um, so we'll have to figure it out because I also know the presence of officers then makes some people uncomfortable. So this is a very dicey situation, but showing that you care is really crucial. And I think we need to figure out how to do that. And I will conclude in, in talking with our officers sometimes and our community. I think sometimes our officers don't know how much the community truly cares about them. And I don't know that our community often understands how, how much our, many of our officers truly care about them. So um, we just need to work on the communication to, to do that and, and pump that up. So again, great to see you and look forward to uh, maybe talking about this a little more. Thank you. Likewise, thank likewise, you. and yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Garvey. Ms. Crystal. Thanks. Yeah, and um, to build on that comment, if Ms. Garvey will indulge me being a little pedantic, the reason we withdrew some of the community policing priorities, such as the district teams, wasn't because of budgets, it was because of recruitment um, and our challenges of keeping the department at full strength. I bring that up only to say um, uh, these issues that are police surface about morale and retention have a big impact, right, exactly as you were saying, on um, how our community experiences policing. So, um, you know, I'm struck, I think, often having gone through quite a few of these recruitments for board appointed or regional board appointed positions, what I am used to is the the tension and the, the sort of dual sided sword between certain attributes, right? Everyone wants somebody who's both collaborative but decisive, <laughs> you know, uh, for example. What's really interesting about seeing this this research and, and the reports from our community and our police department is how, you know, at times it's not even implicit. It is explicit that you have pretty competing understandings. But at the same time, and again, to go back to that, you know, community policing um, foundering on the shoals of, of inability to recruit and retain, 
you know, they we have constituencies looking at these issues differently, but but the the perspectives of both, the lived experiences of both, really affect the other. So so this is certainly a real challenge. Um, you know, I think as has been said in this presentation, as I think many members of our community know, ultimately the hiring is an authority that rests with the county manager. I really appreciate the effort he's made to engage the board and the broader community, including via your work, Mr. Thompson. Um, I wondered if you could give us a little bit of insight, and, and I'd love to hear your recommendations, but also um, if the manager has anything to add on this, um, how you recommend a hiring manager, in this case, our county manager, incorporate either competing data in general or some of the themes of what you've heard? I mean, are, are they making their way into interview questions or um, rubrics for evaluating candidates? What are some of the practical ways um, you've advised our manager to, to take some of this feedback and really apply it to the search? Yes, yeah, so in, in general, it, it the, the first place obviously is in those areas that are really critical. Um, it's a, a, a part of the interview process in terms of the questions that you ask. And in most instances, it's a question that would almost read like, uh, um, give me an example of how you have carried out this particular type of behavior. Uh, not whether or not you consider yourself one or the other, because you know, you're gonna get a pretty good answer to that. Um, it's also, I think, in whatever, you know, reference checking is done, especially reference checking that would be from either neutral or honestly critical sources in terms of has this person actually demonstrated these kinds of characteristics. Um, the other thing about the conflicting data, and, and that's why I mentioned the check marks, is it, it's really a matter of, of how you do it and, and how you want to define it, right? So collaborative decision making uh, in this context wouldn't necessarily mean not being decisive, but it would mean that the police chief would make the, the best effort possible to engage inputs from those who are gonna be affected by the ultimate decision with no real promise that your input is going to be followed because ultimately it's on my shoulders, you know, in that position to make the decision, but to make it clear that I have taken the time, you know, to, to get gather input. The same thing is true with relationship building. I mean, some of the most uh, important relationship building especially by a police chief, especially by uh, the next two levels in a police department is simply being being visiting the community, you know, having a reputation for attending community events and just being present, not necessarily having anything profound to say or to do anything that has anything to do with law enforcement, but just to be a face and a voice that people get used to. So even in this conflicting information, I think they're, 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 the thing that you want to do is to implement the solution incrementally because it's going to be hard to do it full force all at once. It's just too much to happen, but to incrementally. I mean, for example, um, within the, the, the Spanish speaking community, just the idea of getting to know the police chief and having the police chief let them understand how they approach policing, their sensitivity to the backgrounds and the struggles that the people who are live in Arlington have had who come from immigrant communities, that's huge. That, that's just such a that's such a, a, an important step to take. So it's a matter of, of taking an incremental approach as opposed to expecting that you kind of get it all at once. Those those are the things that I would offer, which, you know, seem to work best in this area and and to me are essential with the degree of sensitivity that we are still going to have around this particular topic that would be, you know, from an external standpoint, uh, you know, my input on that. Thank you so much. One of the phrases I've heard community members share with us about this is that they don't want it to be a black box, how their feedback is uh, affecting the the next uh, the selection of the next police chief. So I really appreciate your sharing those examples. Mm -hmm. um, our manager has not magically appeared on the screen, so I'm just going to take it to assume he's implementing all of your tactical recommendations. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it is. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, the head nod for the record. Um, so, uh, and thank you, Ms. Crystal and Mr. Thompson for the for the dialogue and the conversation. Um, all colleagues have, uh, I just want to reiterate, uh, thanks for the work. There is a lot in the slides. You did mention 78 RPM, you, you moved quickly. Yes. yes. Um, and uh, so there's some absorbing that I'll want to do and, and just really appreciate it. I am mindful um, that, uh, that there's, uh, more to do, but just your comments helped make the, the slide deck come alive with your experience. So just really appreciate that. It's uh, I want to look at the, the slides, slides 20 and 21 were of particular interest to me. 
the point about morale resonated, the conversation about traffic stops and a, um, use of force. I see those as different, you know, areas uh, in Arlington. Um, and then, you know, I'm struck by how this is, you know, I want to do a little more thinking about how um, there, I think there's some benefits to doing virtual, and then there's some benefits that we couldn't quite access because of in-person and COVID. But uh, that's all a, a, a kind of a long-winded way of saying thank you so much, want to look at it a little bit more, and I suspect there will be a follow-up, keeping in mind, of course, the, the appropriate, the, the, the just simple reality that the hiring entity is the county manager and the board is fully engaged on the process, but um, hiring is is the county manager. So thank you, Mr. Thompson. And thank um, you much. Very much. Really appreciate it. All of us do. So thank you. Thank you.